Another car here that has its days numbered. Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks. Update video today, out and about taking the dog for a walk as I normally do at this time of the day. And we'll have a bit of a chat about what's happening here in Spain at the moment. Today, the 23rd of December. Now I'll turn the camera around so you can get an idea of what the weather is like today. Overcast, not too cold, around 10 degrees Celsius currently heading up to a top today of around 15 degrees Celsius. But uh, as I just said, pretty cloudy, but it's uh, trapping the temperatures in. And I must say that it's a little bit warmer than it normally is at this time of the year. Normally, uh, the 23rd of December, it would be around uh, seven, eight, nine degrees Celsius. So uh, doubling temperatures almost here today. And uh, even better, if you're in one of the coastal areas here in Spain. A couple of people saying yesterday that the weather in places like Alicante, fantastic, 22 degrees Celsius, 12 degrees at night, so not bad. And uh, also places like Malaga currently, around 21, 22 degrees, sunny. So it's gonna be a fantastic Christmas from a weather point of view in those Mediterranean cities. And I'm sure lots of people from Northern European countries and places like the United Kingdom heading down to Spain, if not here already, to escape those colder winters, those colder Decembers, and uh, get down to a place like Malaga where the weather's good, or uh, even better, if you're able to get to the Canary Islands, which I imagine is absolutely packed at the moment with foreign people getting some sun. Now it's a quieter day than normal. Uh, normally this area is pretty quiet at this time of the day, around 9 a.m but you will see people taking their kids to school. But of course, school here in Madrid finished yesterday. Kids have started their holidays and lots of people no doubt heading to their pueblos or to their cities where they're from originally to uh, enjoy the Christmas break. So even quieter today than normal, if that is possible. I've had a couple of comments on the channel recently about people telling me just how ugly this place that I'm living here in is. Uh, I think it was uh, related to a, a video the other day that I drove around this part of the town showing the new uh, cycle lanes and things like that. And a couple of people said that uh, they couldn't believe how ugly this part of Spain is. And uh, let's be honest, they're not wrong. 40 years ago, this was a barren wasteland land that was used as a rubbish tip because the main rubbish tip here in Madrid is just up the road. So people used to do their fly tipping here or illegal dumping and uh, the city has grown on top of that. I mean architecturally there's nothing special about this place as you can see from the houses behind me. Brown terraced houses and a mix of uh, apartment blocks as well. You could be anywhere in the world. You could be in uh, Birmingham or somewhere like that looking at the uh, architecture around here. No fantastic monuments, no coast. So it is a pretty bleak and ugly area. But uh, one of the main advantages of living in a place like this, outside the big cities here in Spain, is that you've got space. And anybody who lives in a city like Madrid or Barcelona or Valencia, or uh, a big to medium sized city here in Spain, will tell you that uh, space can be an issue. But here, as you can see, we have space. Not many people, low population density, and that for me is important. So yes, this part of Spain is not the most attractive part of Spain, but it is what it is. Now yesterday, the 22nd, was the drawing of the annual Christmas lottery here in Spain. So lots of people around Spain today, 400,000 euros richer, because that's uh, the main prize, 400,000 euros, which is part of a huge pool of money that is shared among uh, people that get the uh, right numbers. Of course, that's the way a lottery works. But the Spanish lottery in that sense is different because uh, there are a lot more prizes, unlike let's say a Euro Millions lottery where maybe only one or two people win. Here in Spain, literally thousands of people win a decent amount of money. Not me, of course, because uh, I don't buy lottery tickets. I think it's a waste of money, but uh, I must say there is a little bit of envy when I see people cracking those champagne bottles open and uh, celebrating their wins. So, as they say, you gotta be in it to win it, but uh, not me. I sometimes get a small participation in the lottery through a sporting club or something like that, which uh, normally shares tickets, my son's football club for example, but uh, the money that you're going to win there is not going to be a lot. Maybe you get uh, 10, 15, 20 euros back. 
but no more than that, a long way off that 400,000. And yesterday when the majority of people here in Spain were looking at their lottery tickets to see if they had won the Christmas lottery, the government uh, was in the Senate and they passed some very, very important laws, very, very important and controversial laws also. They voted yesterday in the Senate to change the penal code to scrap uh, laws of sedition, which uh, put people in jail a few years ago, put Catalan nationalist politicians in prison a few years ago, and uh, also when it comes to embezzlement, they changed the laws there as well, also uh, to benefit politicians. And the opposition parties here in Spain are not happy about these laws being changed. As we know, Spain had a constitutional crisis earlier in the week, and that also took people's attention off the government, and they were able to get this passed in the Senate yesterday with uh, no problems. So 2020 23 here in Spain going to be a very interesting year from an election point of view because as we know general elections at the end of the year also municipal elections earlier in the year and autonomous community elections as well so an interesting year now another piece of news that caught my attention yesterday related to demographics here in Spain around 11.5 percent of the population here in Spain is foreign people that have come to live in Spain from other countries of course and uh, that figure is up from 2019 figures. The biggest immigrant groups here, people coming from Latin American countries, obviously, uh, countries like uh, Brazil, Ecuador, Colombia, Argentina, uh, countries like that, Venezuela as well. Lots of people from the east of Europe, Romania, for example. And I went into the uh, statistics to see what the foreign population was like where I live here. And curiously enough, there are four Australians three others, apart from myself, living in this municipality. Now, I know who one of the other three people is. It's a guy that works at the Australian Embassy here in Madrid. He lives uh, locally here, or at least he did. I uh, suppose that he still does. Myself, that's two. My son's not included because obviously he is a Spanish uh, citizen, Australian as well, but he would be recognized here as Spanish, not Australian. So that leaves two people and uh, I'm curious to know who they are. So if you're an Aussie living in this part of Madrid on the outskirts, Rivas Patia Madrid, let us know and uh, we'll catch up for a coffee or a beer. Now the final thing I want to talk about today is this thing that I have behind me, this sign, ZBEs. As you can see here, this is a ZBE area, primarily because it's next to a school. But in 2023, this whole city, this whole municipality is going to become a ZBE area. Zona de Bajas Emisiones, low emission zone. And what does that mean? Well, basically, if you have a car like this one here, which is probably around 30 years old, 25, 30 years old, doesn't have a new license plate, definitely won't have a sticker on it. You will need to get, as we can see there, one of these ZBE exemption cards. Because if you're not a resident here and you're still driving an old car like that one, you won't be able to drive in this area anymore. Or basically the whole central area of Madrid and uh, many other cities here in Spain that in 2023 are going to establish these ZBE zones. All other cars will have to have a sticker like this one. This is a, uh, a B sticker showing that this is a diesel car after 2006 and up to 2014, I think. And uh, it also has a ZBE exemption card there so that it can park here. This car has a C sticker, which means that it's either a gasoline model car or a later diesel model. This car here doesn't have a sticker at all, even though it has a, an active ITV or MOT until 2023. But the idea is here in Spain to get these old cars off the road. There's a big push on to get people to buy an electric car or a hybrid car or at least the newer type of uh, combustion engine car, diesel or gasoline. But as I said, for vehicles that can't get their hands on one of these stickers, the idea is to get these cars off the road. Here's another example of an old car that has the old Madrid license plate. So again, a car going back here, maybe 25, 30 years old, and uh, also has its days numbered. Is it roadworthy? Yes, because it has the ITV sticker, but that doesn't matter. Your car can be roadworthy. You can have that ITV sticker or MOT sticker, but you still won't be able to drive around the center of 
many, many cities here in Spain in 2023. Another car here that has its days numbered. So as you can see, still a lot of old cars about, at least in this part of uh, Madrid anyway. But uh, unfortunately for the owners of those cars, 2023 is gonna be a year that they most likely have to say goodbye to their vehicle. Here's an example of an environmentally friendly sticker on this car here, an eco sticker. And uh, that together with the zero sticker are the ones that uh, are going to allow you to drive everywhere in this country. So next year going to be an interesting year for cars and car owners in this country, especially if you live in a city of more than 50,000 people. So uh, we'll see how that develops throughout the year. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.